Okay, so um, first I will present myself. Uh, I'm Konstantin. Uh, last week I, uh, um, I became 30 years old and uh, so far I've um, achieved some of my dreams. Uh, now I have new ones. <laughs> Uh, so what I uh, I'm currently a software engineer and team lead uh, at a small team with six people. Uh, I'm also a wingsuit pilot and uh, wingsuit instructor. Uh, currently, the only one certified in uh, Bulgaria. Um, and also, uh, I had a long path uh, during uh, which I transitioned from being. Uh, quite the average uh, between uh, all people and uh, then started uh, chasing my dreams and uh, I think that uh, everyone uh, when starting, a, uh, starting uh, going after their dreams uh, can become like unique person with a super interesting story. But uh, for that you need to be like uh, with a tunnel vision and uh, to go with your dreams, no matter uh, what it takes for you. Well, actually, I achieved a couple of dreams, so it, it's not like uh, last year I closed like uh, being the wingsuit pilot. Uh, and uh, some of my travels, uh, I want to go to a a uh, really beautiful road in Romania, actually it's quite close, like uh, half a day uh, ride with a car, but uh, uh, also went to Thailand and Cambodia, but uh, the best place I found there was uh, Kuala Lumpur, I really liked the city, like with the skyscraper scenery and uh, yeah, the skyline of the city is really great. Actually, from, then, uh, from there I have my uh, so far biggest dream that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to achieve uh, but it's to build a uh, hundred story building sorry, yes here in Bulgaria here in Bulgaria? yes uh, <laughs> okay. uh, so far uh, the goal is to be in Sofia a backup plan to be in Plovdiv um, but I'll see if I can achieve it so um, is, is, it, is the goal for the building just to be able to jump from it or...? Is no, <laughs> no, I, I actually, I, I had a dream from jumping from cliffs and buildings and I don't have it anymore. Uh, I, at this moment I don't need it. Uh, maybe if my life gets too boring, I can go chasing that one. Uh, so. I'll start with uh, my childhood. So uh, these were my first uh, like dreams. Like uh, I would say, they're typical boys' dreams. Like uh, the first one was to be a jet fighter pilot. Like it's uh, so romantic from the movies, uh, flying with planes, uh, shooting at the bad guys, stuff like this. And um, after that. Uh, the reality hit me that uh, it's uh, quite different and uh, actually you're really restrained. Uh, you have a lot of restrictions of in becoming a pilot of the physical uh, regulations and other stuff. So this uh, dream transformed into becoming a skydiver uh, and after that, uh, I found uh, flying people with the, the ones with the wingsuits, uh, and then I become a wingsuit pilot. And actually, when you're a wingsuit pilot, you're not only the pilot, but you're also the plane. So this is really interesting. And uh, a little spoiler for for the end: I was not only the plane, but I had two jumps where I was having a passenger with me. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the other one uh, was to become a hacker, uh, like uh, this was really interesting. This one also changed. Um, at the end of the university I had like uh, idea of uh, studying computer security and 
doing that one, but uh, programming at that time was uh, more close to me, uh, to the things that I've done for the past, uh, like, almost 10 years, because uh, I'm working uh, with uh, computer code, like, when I was uh, seventh grade, which is 14, like, it's more than half my life currently. Uh, and after that, um, I just started working uh, as a computer engineer to be able to pay for my jumps <laughs> to achieving the other dream. So uh, when I, I was able to achieve this dream, this helped me to achieve the other one. So it's all connected. But uh, you can al always connect the dots when you are going backwards. You cannot connect it forward. Um, and uh, actually, uh, when I got my second job, uh, uh, they asked me, where do you see yourself? And I told them that mm, I want to lead a team. I had one to have my own team. Um, and uh, this was like uh, in five years. And uh, I started leading my team uh, after three and a half years, I think. Yes, three and a half after that. So, um, and for the last three years, I'm uh, uh, leading a software engineering team. Um, okay, so uh, how um, the thing started to change. Uh, first, I was uh, average. I was overweight. This is overweight. No, no matter what everything everyone thinks, I was uh, uh, going uh, to nightclubs, uh, drinking with friends. Sometimes more excessive drinking than others. Um, this was because you were fat or? Uh, no, this was because uh, it was what everybody else do, does. So mo most of the people in university do that. Uh, it was fun time, interesting time. I'm not proud of it. I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, I'm happy that I have these dreams, but uh, I could have uh, uh, get that time better from my current perspective. Uh, it's better to have them at this age than at 50. Yes, uh, I agree with that one. Um, I also had, uh, on this picture, I also had asthma. Uh, I was not able to uh, do physical exercise when I was running like 200 meters. I had like a asthma stroke unable to breathe, and uh, this does not help with uh, fighting obesity. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, one of the first persons that uh, get me into the straight line was my mother. So she uh, pushed me to uh, go to a homeopathic uh, doctor, and uh, he prescribed me a diet. Uh, I think that, that was more important, and some uh, homeopathic drugs. Uh, and after one month, uh, I was cured of asthma, and uh, no other people uh, from uh, no medical doctors uh, were uh, was saying that uh, asthma is uh, incurable, and uh, I will live with it the whole of my life. And uh, after two yes, one month, one month, and uh, this was almost ten years ago, and. Uh, I hadn't had uh, asthma stroke since then. Yeah, so uh, that thing is really important. Uh, basically, food is uh, what makes us. So uh, then I started uh, losing weight. So on this picture, I was 87 kilos. After that, on my thinnest, I was like 63, some, some around 63, and now my current weight is around 72, 73. Uh, but also, the, it's not only the weight, it's the body composition that matters more. So uh, with this, I started losing weight with dieting, but I didn't achieve the results that uh, I wanted. So when you look at the, the mirror, you want to look like something like athletic, stuff like this. And uh, yeah, only with dieting, this does not work. Like, 
you know, soft and mushy like, like that, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but uh, the, the thing that uh, this required to be like uh, focused on the instructions for the one month diet and after that, uh, most of the diet that I follow, they're super strict. Uh, so this is when you uh, want to achieve something, you need to have the plan, how to achieve it and uh, uh, to break it down and to follow it step by step. Even if some, something throws you off your path, uh, just go back and continue. Just very shortly, what sort of yes. diet can you just very briefly? Uh, I followed many types of diets uh, for the last three years. I am on a plant-based diet, so I mostly eat uh, plants and vegetables. Not super exclusively, so, but uh, this is uh, what I believe is good for my body. Um, no, it's uh, sometimes I taste meat, but uh, it's not like part of uh, my my regular food. I I don't buy uh, diary or meat. It's if something I want to try, I try it, but uh, that's it. So you're a vegan? Yes. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, Also, when I, uh, I graduated, uh, I started working and this was the time that uh, I uh, decided, actually I had uh, uh, some money to start jumping because uh, all uh, uh, flying sports and the whole flying industry is like super expensive. And yeah, it's uh, something that uh, you need you really need to have passion for it to, to do. Uh, and w with my current job, I was able to pay for the jumping. So uh, then uh, I found uh, the flying. So, so first I started jumping. So a little bit on the back. Uh, my dream to start jumping from place was since uh, 10th grade, so uh, this is uh, like 16 years old and uh, uh, for every ma ma birthday uh, my parents asked me what present do you want and I told them I want uh, a, a skydiving course to become a skydiver and uh, since it was too expensive currently the course for skydiving it's uh, consisted of seven jumps uh, and uh, half day of theory and you can uh, do them in three to four days it's uh, uh, 2700 level uh, so it's uh, quite an investment and after that for every jump uh, you pay additional 60 level uh, so um, this was every year from 10th grade till I graduated. And when I graduated, I had uh, a job before that. I collected some money and then I started uh, the course. Um, the people there were really great. And uh, I currently I found them as my part of my family. And um, during the first uh, year, uh, during the first winter, because in winter we jump rarely or none at all. Uh, so during the first winter, I started looking at movie clips, the one that probably all of you looked. So for the people jumping out of buildings, uh, mountains, cliffs, uh, flying uh, with wingsuits. Uh, and I said, okay, that's really cool. I want to do that. Uh, this is my dream. And then I started uh, creating a plan how to achieve this. So I knew that I need to buy uh, skydiving gear. I, I knew I had to have 200 jumps to become a wingsuit pilot in order to, to jump from uh, cliffs with wingsuits. First, you need to be able to jump from cliffs without wingsuit and also to fly the wingsuit. And I said, okay, I'll stay with the skydiving. 
become a wingsuit pilot in skydiving, and after that, we'll see where this goes. Uh, and uh, on the second year, uh, I collected my 200 jumps, and uh, I took a wingsuit course and uh, made my first flight. Did you take the course in Bulgaria? Uh, Yes, but uh, I had it uh, from one of my friends uh, who lives in New Zealand and he's Bulgarian, but he comes uh, like one, once a year for like two, mo two weeks, something, so think there is something like this. Oh, there is course and I'm leading the yeah, course I mean, for, for the <laughs> winter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, yeah th there was none. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, the uh, this guy he's uh, like super experienced. He has like uh, more than twenty two thousand jumps, uh, but this is his profession and like he's jumping for the last thirty years or something I think. So he do it daily. Uh, but uh, follow, following my two hundred jumps like it takes really long time. You you're able to do between zero to like six, seven jumps regularly. Uh, I've done 10 jumps at most uh, for one day. And during the weekdays, I was on work, working, collecting money for, <laughs> for the weekends to go to the drop zone and uh, jump. And uh, most of uh, my free weekends I spent on the drop zone jumping. And uh, actually a lot of time you're just waiting in the sky uh, to have a good weather conditions. So, you, prove that yeah. you, made 200 jumps? Uh, you have uh, a logbook and you log uh, all of your jumps, and uh, on the drop zone, they uh, stamp your uh, logbook. So, mm -hmm. even you, if, if you go somewhere else, uh, if you're jumping on one drop zone, they more or less know how many jumps you, you've done. But uh, going to, on different drop zones, like uh, uh, in the Netherlands or uh, Slovenia, you have a logbook and you always carry it with you when you're going on a place where you want to jump. Uh, um, okay, I'll continue with uh, the flying and then we'll continue with the slides. So, so actually, it's connected with this one. So. Uh, you see that everything is connected. Uh, uh, so I've used YouTube and Facebook for the videos for the people that fly to, to find how, uh, uh, how to achieve it. And uh, this, this way I built my dream what uh, I want to become. Uh, I had like troubles doing the wingsuit course here. Uh, first, I tried to uh, bring one guy from the Netherlands, but uh, that one failed and uh, the, the one uh, from the New Zealand was like my backup plan. Uh, but most of the time after that, uh, I teach myself how to fly the wingsuit because he was here for one week and after that he was gone and I was here jumping and uh, most of my first 150 jumps I made on my own, which is uh, not something that I recommend, but uh, it was uh, better than not jumping at all. So this was my road. The first jump, like with the wingsuit, was this like oh, the the first uh, flight with the wingsuit. It's um, I would say it's like uh, a common uh, jump. Like you're not flying that much uh, for the first jump. Uh, we're focusing on. Uh, on the exit of the plane to be safe, uh, some navigation for uh, the student to be able to orient uh, himself because uh, when you jump out of plane, you're mostly falling down, but the wingsuit you have like uh, a lot of uh, horizontal speed, not only vertical, and uh, you can travel significant distances. So uh, in this way, you're able to, you should be able to navigate and not to land, uh, uh, like anywhere, but on the correct spot and not hitting uh, other people in the sky. 
Uh, and uh, the last one is the opening. So the opening is uh, quite different because uh, in a regular opening, uh, your body position is like this. So this is the stable position for the skydivers. But with the wingsuits, your arms are not going above this place because uh, you have the wings and this is their maximum span. So uh, it's different and uh, it can cause additional uh, problems for the correct opening of the parachute. Uh, but after that, when you start flying more and learning to fly, it's, it's really different. And uh, the sound you hear, uh, because with uh, regular skydiving, you're falling with rates about 200 kilometers an hour. And for the uh, wingsuit, um, it's really, you can really control it. Like uh, you can do a head down dive like with uh, 350 kilometers an hour. Uh, you can also do it with the skydiving, but uh, after that you can use all that uh, energy that you collected uh, with the speed from the speed and then you flare the wingsuit and you can fly upwards it, it, it's not, not like forever <laughs> but you can uh, fly upwards for like a uh, couple of seconds it's also important not forget the <laughs> yes um, so i spent uh, a lot of time uh, uh, with uh, these platforms, uh, like uh, learning what uh, I need to do, uh, like building my dreams and uh, finding people that achieve their dreams. Like uh, one of the people I really liked seeing on YouTube well, was a guy called Bionic Rob, and uh, he was a wingsuit pilot and he was missing a leg, and I think it was like around his knee. Uh, and uh, actually what's very interesting is if you've seen the uh, animation movie with the dragons, uh, I don't know, I don't remember the name, uh, how, how to train your dragon. Uh, there's uh, a person, uh, the, one of the main characters, uh, he's missing a leg and uh, in one of the episodes he's flying uh, with his dragon and uh, the prototype of the hero is like this guy Bionic Rob. So uh, it's really interesting and uh, yes, be being able to fly uh, a wingsuit with uh, like uh, such a disability is like a great achievement. And I said, okay, like these people are doing it, I will achieve it. Uh, and um, Finding the difficulties that I have nobody to learn from uh, for the wing shooting and uh, we have no regulations, uh, nobody uh, if you have problems to, to go with. And then I decided, okay, so let's make other people not have the, the same problem that I did and not uh, going the same road because there were, at, I, I knew at least one person that uh, had a similar role before me, but uh, then uh, he uh, went to living in uh, in the Netherlands, I think, and it was uh, again nobody flying here. So I decided I will become an instructor. I I give myself two years. I achieved it for three, I think, after after my first flight, three or four, something like this. So it took me a little bit more time, uh, but. Um, I knew what I had to do. Uh, I went to uh, fly with other people in the Netherlands. So they have like uh, one of the biggest, uh, they call it boogies. Uh, it's uh, like a, uh, a festival for skydivers. And uh, there you go. Uh, on the one in the Netherlands, we were uh, between 100 and 120 wingsuit pilots. 15 instructors, uh, mostly from Europe, but uh, not exclusively. We also had uh, instructors from Australia, from, I think there was one from the States, and like uh, seeing so many people, like they're, some of them are really experienced flyers. Uh, you can learn a lot. And then I said, okay, uh, help me to 
uh, become instructor what I need to learn. They give me some hints. I started uh, learning the skills. And uh, last summer, uh, I was uh, in the Slovenia, a uh, really beautiful place. Uh, the, their drop zone is between two mountains. So it's like uh, a valley and the uh, drop zone is in the valley. It's really beautiful place. So uh, if you want to, to skydive, I would uh, say that this is one of the best places I've skydived and it's like 100 km, uh, 1,000 kilometers away from here, which is not super, Just super question. far. You're skydiving, meaning you're going to the plane and jump from there? Yes, base. exactly. Not base jumping like Exactly, you know. yes. yes. I'm not a base jumper. Yeah, because I was like, where in Poland you can base jump, you know? No, they, uh, they mostly jump in, uh, uh, in uh, the Alps, like Switzerland, Italy, France, uh, and also uh, Norway, they jump a lot in Norway. Uh, during the summer, uh, this is for for Europe. Are, these are the most common places for jumping out. Do you want to do a jump? Uh, not yet. I don't do as many jumps as I think will be somewhat safe. So, like skydiving is super safe. You have uh, a lot of altitude. No, no, it's super safe. It's like uh, safer than walking on the street. Yeah, you can get you can be hit by car. Uh, yes, and it's pure statistics. So, uh, for the uh, the wing shooting is a little bit more dangerous because you're a little bit more restricted. But uh, skydiving is generally really safe. Uh, Bay jumping, on the other hand, is uh, especially the one flying really close to the terrain is the most dangerous sport, the most little sport uh, that currently humans are participating in. Yes, and uh, m one of the biggest problems is that uh, people that jump uh, there, uh, yeah, there's no restrictions there. You cannot get uh, police officers on every uh, rock and say, yeah, do you have like uh, 200 jumps to jump from this cliff or not? It, people just go and jump. Uh, and uh, actually in the United States, it's forbidden. Uh, it's illegal there, and if you jump, they can uh, arrest you for that. Uh, in you, in most of Europe, it's uh, not regulated, but it's okay to jump. Uh, but uh, at some, uh, I, I think it was Chamonix when one, one pilot hit uh, a cabin in the forest, and they forbid the flying for, uh, I think it was six months or twelve months, something like this. Uh, but but again, I've also watched uh, one live stream from a guy that uh, uh, he went on a cliff and then put his phone in uh, his pocket and after that started flying and then hit something. And uh, after a couple of hours, uh, he was found uh, from the rescue team, but uh, he didn't survive it. So it's like, there's a the danger is really, really big. I, I do like a hundred jumps a year, a hundred skydives. Uh, and I consider it like the bare minimum for someone who is wanting to progress somehow. Um, and... Uh, yes, uh, it, there's also uh, a tunnels. Most of them are for skydiving. Uh, like for the skydiving, the technology is uh, quite old, like uh, at least for 30 years or more. And for wing shooting, there is uh, one in uh, Sweden, but this one uh, is like uh, uh, about one and a half years. Uh, in the beginning, uh, I learned a lot, a lot of things in the tunnels and after that, uh, I practiced it in skydiving and uh, last year I was uh, the one in Sweden and uh, I would say that I flew with one of the, maybe the best uh, wingsuit pilot in the world currently. He's, uh, uh, actually he's the guy that I wanted to came here and uh, to teach me uh, uh, wingsuiting. And uh, finally I had the, the chance to go and fly with him. I had like four and a half hours in the tunnel the tunnel is super expensive. It's like uh, uh, it's a 
Okay, oh shoot. Is this the show both channels? Yes, so. Uh, so this is the this is the 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 tunnel for the skydiver so it's like a cylinder and you're flying inside uh, here this is me and this is the instructor and uh, he was teaching me how to how to carve around the tunnel with, on my back so we don't have such thing here no, uh, the closest one that's commercially available is in uh, Slovakia, I think. This is in Praga. I believe there is that around Jumbo. Yes, no, that, 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 that's a whole building. <laughs> it, it, it's a five-story building. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's completely different. And you cannot do this one uh, in the one, and I also know that that one is disassembled. So uh, this is for skydiving. Uh, the other one that you, it's for tourists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so I would say that uh, th th this was from my last uh, tunnel. It was 2016. Uh, after that. Uh, I went flying uh, in the other tunnel last year, uh, and this is one. This one is inclined, so it's like uh, the flying chamber is not uh, vertical; it's inclined. So, like you can, f because we, uh, with skydiving you're falling down, and when you you're flying forward. Why do you go to such tunnels? I mean, to learn, uh, yes, but uh, uh, I, as I told you, you can jump like around uh, five, maximum ten jumps a day, and in the tunnel you can do one hour of flying. And uh, no, it's not the same. It's worth it. Yes, is it? Yes, it's worth it. Actually, the the instructor there. Uh, he, he now uh, only teaches in the tunnel and a uh, very small, um, small portion of the things uh, he's teaching, he's teaching in the sky because you're not able to do some maneuvers inside the tunnel. But, but um, here you're learning to fly really precise and even if something happens and you fall or do something you can really fast reset the whole setup and start flying again together and in the sky if you you mess something up and you fall down and uh, the jump is over so you got like uh, something between 30 seconds to 45 seconds uh, usable time per jump for uh, for the day and you have to pay your slot, the slot of the instructor and uh, here for one hour you can make like 20 minutes flying because it's like exhausting for the body and uh, in the sky for a whole day you can collect like five minutes. Uh, and, and here for four days I, I, I get uh, four and a half hours. So I, I, I get the same time for about five years of jumping or four years, something like that. How long is the longest jump that you have on the plane? Uh, yes, o o on the plane, for, uh, from the plane with the wingsuit, uh, I've achieved like two minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, and the regular skydivers that are jumping uh, from the same altitude, like they made around uh, 45 to 50 seconds. Is this like, uh, does this count on this book? No, no, no. Uh, because here you don't have the openings, you don't have the exit from the plane and you don't have the flank with the canopy. So uh, you, you've got the skill, but uh, even uh, if you collect uh, endless amount of time in the tunnel with uh, 
uh, with the wingsuit and without the wingsuit, you're still not going to be permitted uh, to jump uh, from a plane with a wingsuit if you don't have 200 jumps. Because uh, the dangerous part is exiting the plane and opening, and you, you don't train them here. So this is the problem. Uh, okay, so after that, uh, Um, when I started jumping, uh, I had like uh, uh, one summer that uh, my arms like started to be sore and I uh, have pains in my arms uh, from all the jumping and packing and stuff like this. And then I decided, okay, I need to get in better shape, better physical and more athletic shape in order to be able to jump more. Uh, and uh, one of my colleagues sent me uh, I think it was a YouTube clip uh, uh, for some kind of training program and they said like uh, how people that are not athletic for three months uh, transform their bodies uh, completely uh, like looking like, like real athletes and stuff like this and uh, I also used the platforms uh, for me, like uh, looking different people. I started using the program then. I think it was like really good for me as the beginning. Currently, uh, I'm training on a different, more strength-oriented program, but in the beginning, like this was really helped me uh, gain more um, air, be more fit, look better. And of course, I, I had the dream like having a six pack. <laughs> Yeah, it, it always starts like that. Uh, you you have uh, some image for you, and after that, uh, I started researching uh, how I can be better in training to be better looking. <laughs> and uh, uh, with the time, I researched more for training. After that, started uh, reading about uh, the dieting. Uh, well, how to find better ways to recover faster from training to be able to train more. Uh, and uh, I've watched, watched a lot of YouTube uh, uh, clips. Um, there were a lot of presentations from doctors and stuff like this that they showed how uh, on a vegan diet uh, they are able to cure like more of the uh, most common disease that uh, currently people are dying from and their heart disease, heart disease diabetes. Uh, and uh, yes, they're all based on what we eat. It's not like you don't have to have them. Yeah, diabetes type two is curable. And uh, it's not my statement. I've, I've watched a lot of uh, doctors how they cure it. And uh, uh, after some research, uh, even the uh, American Association of the Doctors, uh, like they also uh, recognize it as uh, as a treatment. The standard, uh, if you see standard uh, medicine, they don't uh, advise you to eat uh, on a vegan diet because uh, you have a, a vegan diet is mostly uh, from uh, carbohydrates, but they're are not simple, they're complex carbohydrates and you have a lot of fiber. And uh, the main problem of diabetes type two is that you have uh, fat in your muscle cells and this fat is blocking the insulin going inside uh, uh, the muscle cell, opening it for it to absorb the uh, glucose from your bloodstream. So uh, this is... Uh, yeah, he's fat Mexican, but uh, he trained a lot. It's not like, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say that uh, he, uh, his dream and uh, he was not all day uh, standing behind the uh, generous eating uh, junk food, but most of the time he spent in the, uh, on the boxing ring training. So. Uh, for me, uh, the more I looked at uh, the, the clips, I've, um, 
I studied more. I, I was really interested at that part in uh, the medicine and the food, how the food is working on my body. I tried different types of that. Also tried uh, something which is uh, really hard to uh, have a, a plant-based uh, ketogenic diet, but uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, in the end, uh, you look good because you, you lose a lot of water, but uh, actually for training, uh, water is really important for the body. For most of our bodies are made of water. So, um, yeah, it can help you for some stuff, but uh, yeah, in, in the end, you, you collect a lot of uh, fat around your uh, internal organs, which is fat you cannot see. But uh, it's more dangerous than the one under the skin. Um, sorry? Yes. Uh, you can show the videos because we don't have. Uh... So, um, as I told you, it's everything. Uh, everything is connected. Uh, I was able to skydive because uh, uh, I was following my dream and uh, work was really easy for me. And after that, uh, I started training because of the skydiving. Uh, and uh, for the training, I started researching for the food and how to look better. And uh, in the end, uh, this led me to the path uh, uh, finding a way how I can uh, uh, live healthier. Uh, and uh, my current uh, target is like uh, if and, uh, and when I grow old, because I'm jumping from place and uh, everybody can be hit uh, by a car, so uh, you don't know when you die. But uh, if I become old, like, I would really like to use my body on full potential. And there are a lot of uh, old people that uh, if you move, uh, if you have uh, proper uh, food and nutrition plans and uh, also your brain. Your brain is like uh, your muscles and you need to train it also. Uh, you can be like really healthy and active uh, person like 80, 90 years. Uh, one of the vegan doctors, he was a heart surgeon. He was uh, uh, operating uh, until he was 95 years old. And then uh, he said to his colleagues, it's time uh, to take a break and to spend more time with my family. <laughs> uh, and uh, in, the, in the beginning, uh, he was eating uh, uh, standard diet, but he was not really keen on uh, meat and dairy. And after uh, when they found out that uh, you don't need uh, to eat dairy for calcium, actually it's the opposite. When you eat uh, dairy, it causes you uh, to drain calcium from your bones because of the acidity you're getting inside your body. Uh, so then he became vegan and uh, yeah, he, he, he was one operating uh, uh, people's hearts and uh, he knows what he, he knows it very well and uh, saw the results of uh, a lot of people uh, eating a lot of fat. Uh, and uh, th this is uh, animal fat. So um, this one, uh, I, I'm not sure if he's still alive, but if he's, uh, uh, there was one movie when he, uh, where he was 103 years old or 105, and uh, he was uh, walking down the streets of the streets uh, up the stairs, and uh, he was also taking care for his garden. So, uh, but uh, what you need to to do is uh, to start researching because uh, the problem in our society is that there is a lot of information and if you want you can find that vegan is super healthy and if you want if you want you can find that vegan is super dangerous and you can find it for everything i promise you you can uh, find that uh, cheese is super healthy and the cheese is super dangerous and it can kill you if you want if you eat one bit uh, the same is for uh, for all, all kinds of foods. Um, so uh, here's some for the training. Uh, 
I also do uh, have uh, like a uh, training plan and I do it daily and to have results, as I said, you have uh, to be focused on the stuff you're doing to be able to achieve the dreams and having the dream, breaking it down and chasing it and also finding people that motivate you to do it because I also have my downtimes that I don't want to train but when I don't want to train I go back to YouTube and I uh, play some video uh, with uh, some people that are training or somebody that uh, tells you that you need to train because uh, this is how you achieve your dreams or like listening for stories like Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, The Rock and uh, other uh, people that uh, when you have the vision of you uh, achieving something uh, and uh, you know the road that you need to go, it's uh, easier to follow it. If you don't have that, uh, you're like uh, wandering around. So I told you a lot of the food, uh, something uh, else, uh, healthy food can be tasty. Uh, the picture here is not very good, uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, raw vegan uh, cake and uh, it's like super delicious. So, so, so yeah, yes, some of the people in the room uh, can confirm. <laughs> yes, and the, the other thing is like, uh, uh, for my food plan, I tried uh, to have my food like prepare it for three to five days. Uh, so one day I'm cooking, was spending more time cooking, but uh, on the next uh, three to five days I have like my food and when I go somewhere I just grab it and uh, I have no distractions for that one because Again, I have the plan and sticking to the plan is easy when you have them and you don't say, okay, now I have to cook again and stuff like this. And uh, when uh, you're prepared for, for the plan, it's uh, a lot easier to achieve it than uh, if you try to come with it every day. Uh, being consistent, so this is my room. Uh, this is a 360 view of my room and as you see, I don't have excuses for training <laughs> because no matter if it's rainy, uh, if the weather is too hot or something like this, uh, I have my training equipment and I can train at home. So it, they don't take really a lot of place and uh, they're not super expensive like uh, the weights are some, somewhat expensive because you're pay, paying for the iron per kilogram, but uh, it's like uh, uh, help, this helps me really stick uh, for myself. And uh, actually for this year, I also improved really a lot of my, on my handstand. And one of the things that helped me improve on my handstand is that I had a challenge. Uh, uh, at uh, 12 o'clock uh, in the beginning of this year, I, I was with one of my friends and we uh, get to the new year on handstand and I told him, okay, for the whole year I'm going to make uh, every day a picture of me on handstand and I tried to, the picture to be uh, straight, uh, like uh, on this one and uh, when I don't like the picture, I take a couple of pictures, so I do stand more on handstand, so this gets me better on on doing this and uh, ach achieving this one. So uh, being consistent is uh, like super important. So th th this, is, this is what gets you to your goal. Uh, and uh, also it's good uh, to, uh, when you achieve something uh, from your plan, it's, uh, even if it's a step or uh, an end goal. Uh, most of the times when you get to the end goal, you're probably looking down the road again and uh, find something new. Like my first uh, goal was to start skydiving. After that, I found the wingsuit flying and then find that nobody is uh, teaching other people. So I decided, okay, I will extend this to become an uh, instructor and help other people achieve their dreams like I achieved mine. And, to be a little, at least a little bit more easier for them for this one. Uh, on this one, I've run a marathon. 
this was my first marathon before that one. Uh, the longest distance I've run, it was 10 kilometers and it was like uh, at least five years before that picture was taken. Uh, so, and for the past year of that marathon, it was super interesting that uh, I've, I hadn't run a single kilometer before that. And not the smartest decision, <laughs> I, I don't recommend it, but uh, it was like uh, mental training for me. I found it from another guy, he was like uh, super crazy. He, his first marathon, he ran uh, about 120 kilograms and uh, he was running uh, 100 miles or 160 kilometers for less than, uh, his target was for 24 hours and he ran it in 20 hours, but uh, in the end he was, uh, he almost died. <laughs> so uh, doing stuff like this, it's not super healthy for the body. And uh, I have like, uh, for after that one, I wasn't uh, able to walk on the next day. I was like uh, in super bad condition and recovered like, for about two weeks, um, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, it's like uh, when I get to some tough situation and uh, I have to endure something, uh, need to do it, then I can go back to this memory and I said, okay, uh, I I hate running. Uh, it's it's not for me, uh, but uh, I've I've accomplished this because uh, I wanted to train myself for, for the hardest moments. So when you achieve stuff like this, just uh, stop, recognize them, be happy for them. And after that, find the next goal and continue on the road. And uh, I use this as uh, one of my mottos. We only fail when we stop trying. So no matter how many times you fail, uh, just keep trying uh, because uh, as I told you, I had like target to hit my uh, to get my wingsuit instructor like two years after I become a wingsuit pilot and it took me four. So there were some hiccups on the road and uh, I would say that uh, the handstand training is more, more close to this one because I felt like thousands of times before I learned how to, how to handstand. So uh, yeah, just keep doing high have a few more videos uh, if you'd like to see. Uh, this one I promised to you. Uh, it was the one with the passenger. Uh, <laughs> this is true. And, uh, yeah. The back. Yes, uh, she's uh, holding on my back, and uh, <laughs> yes, actually she she, uh, she made a, 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 a really uh, cool uh, Facebook video with uh, music and soundtrack on it, and it was like super cool. So. <laughs> What is the maximum number of passengers? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I saw a video with two passengers, but I think this is the maximum. And here, uh, sorry. Uh, Does she need to pay extra to do this kind of moves? Sorry? Does she need to pay extra to do this kind of moves instead of just uh, <laughs> no. uh, so, so here you cannot see her, but actually uh, she's flying and uh, because the camera is pointed uh, on the backward and I'm flying with my, my wingsuit uh, with the head down and carving around her, like similar to the one that you saw in the, uh, in the wind tunnel that we were the two rotating uh, against each other. So, but here I'm with a wingsuit <laughs> and it's a little bit more complex, but uh, yeah, it was really fun jump. And uh, we both have parachutes. So she has her own parachute and here's my parachute and now you see the opening, so... And, and uh, she, she's over there. <laughs> yes. Is it coming from the Netherlands that you can show them? 
I have uh, somewhere here a Bitcoin. So this one is pretty cool. I, at some point I was also training pole dancing. Uh, I, in the beginning I was using it for the stretching because they forced us to stretch. Uh, after that I started stretching on my own. Uh, but uh, it's interesting. And uh, here I was jumping with uh, my, one of my friends. Uh, this is my instructor who taught me skydiving. Uh, he wasn't seeing much with that face because uh, he was seeing only with, uh, through this hole. <laughs> Uh, yeah, on the other one, he was not able to see. He, he has a helmet be, uh, uh, un underneath uh, the mask. So, yeah, it was like a uh, fun jump. Really fun. Uh, so, oh, uh, I can also show you this. Uh, this is also interesting. Uh, I was making shots for my uh, friends uh, at one of the Christmas parties. Yes. I still do have parties from time to time, but uh, I keep the alcohol to me. Or... <laughs> okay. Uh, this one is from the Netherlands. So this is the biggest formation I've so far it was I think like 13 people or 15 something between 13 and 15 people mm. One super interesting uh, thing is like uh, it's surreal. Like uh, you see when the formation gets together and every everybody gets on his slot flying, uh, and it looks that like the whole formation is not moving and everybody is sitting on his spot, and uh, and, and yeah, at the same time everybody is moving uh, with uh, like uh, 200 kilometers an hour. In a, in a three-dimensional direction because uh, we're not only falling down, but we're also flying forward. Yeah, here like here you can see it like really good. What are your parents saying about it? <laughs> <laughs> They're not super happy. <laughs> and, and, and at the same time, they're, they're like uh, very proud because uh, <laughs> Because of the things that I have achieved. Our mom's hair is very quickly turning white. <laughs> yeah. There is probably a clock that is. You no, uh, it's n it's not a clock. Clock won't work. Won't do the work. It's uh, I have an altimeter. Actually, I have four altimeters on my gear. Uh, one is uh, for an emergency automatic opening of the parachute if I'm really low and it's supposed to save my life. And uh, uh, I also have two in my helmet and one on my chest with uh, display. So the two in the helmet they are like audible. Sounds so I set them up on uh, certain altitudes. And you have two parachutes, right? Yes, I have two parachutes. Uh, I can also show you one really cool uh, jump. This one is uh, from two weeks ago. Um, that was your last jump? My last jump was two weeks ago. Yeah, uh, here. I was testing a new 360 camera and like the cool thing is that you can browse around, but here the speed, the internet connection is not super fast. Was the standard 
Uh, we were jumping uh, currently uh, from uh, 4,200 meters. So, 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 something around this. Yes, but this is more standard. So, something between three to four and a half. And this guy jumped from, I don't know, Yes, that's uh, not. Uh, not your everyday jump. So, I'm sorry, but uh, here the video is not in super good quality. Here is ra like really cool that you can see the clouds. And uh, when I look down, you can see also the uh, altimeter on my chest. Mm -hmm. What do you think about uh, Felix Gardner? Do you remember that guy? Yes. Uh, Do you have a dream like that? <laughs> no. Uh, I, I don't uh, think that uh, that one is like super, super hard. Like, and uh, I, I, I don't have the need to, to do that one. So I, I'm liking the 100 story building uh, dream better. And uh, if I'm able to, to build a 100-story uh, building, I might probably also be able to do the same jump if I want. Actually, uh, uh, one of the executives of Google, uh, he beat the record of Alex Baumgartner a uh, couple of months, two years after that, but uh, nobody heard about it because it was not promoted. It was like... Uh, he was doing it for his own and not like uh, the Red Bull stuff, uh, like uh, mm -hmm. to get uh, uh, advertisement and stuff like this. So, but how much strength do you need to do that? I mean, uh, uh, I actually, it depends uh, how much you're pushing it, but uh, it's more visible in the tunnel because in the tunnel you're flying more and. Uh, on the fourth day, I was like really sore on my forearms and on my shoulders. So uh, it's like in the winter, no, it's tiring. Definitely, you, you, you need to have a good physical fitness for that one. Uh, how, long, how long does it take to open the shoot? Two minutes? Maybe or so? uh, yeah, on that one, it was like around uh, two minutes, the jump. And uh, for the openings, uh, the difference between the base jumping and the skydiving is that uh, you, in base jumping, uh, you have one parachute, you don't have altitude for second one. So if it fails, you fail. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not good. Uh, yes, and uh, especially with the wingsuits, uh, there's a lot of turbulence behind the wingsuit that can cause uh, problems and malfunctions on the openings. Uh, on skydiving, uh, we are opening between uh, 1,200. Uh, when I'm jumping with new suits like this one, actually he's over there. Uh, I can show you uh, your doing suit also. Uh, so when you open, uh, I open like 1,500, 1,600 meters in or if I have some problems to go to my emergency procedures and not to be in super hurry or maybe try to somehow fix uh, the main canopy if this is possible. Have you experienced something like that so far? Yes, uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> Actually, on my last jump, uh, when I was there, I had a cutaway. Like, uh, I had problem, I had no function on my uh, main canopy, so I had to open my reserve. This was my first uh, opening for the reserve. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, it, it was malfunction uh, caused uh, by the wingsuit and my body, my poor, my not that good body position on the opening. So uh, basically, I caused it. But uh, yeah, after that, I sent the videos to. Uh, the guy that uh, uh, teach me how to be uh, to be an instructor to help me to identify uh, some problems and uh, how to minimize them, how to yeah you cannot fully eliminate them but uh, you can do as much 
uh, not to happen. So that's why the, the, the time in the tunnel does not count uh, as jumps because the, uh, the life-threatening parts of the jumps are not the flying, but <laughs> the landing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that one I will have to search more. Uh, I will show you the wingsuit. This one is my biggest one. I have like five jumps. It's the, the blue one over there. And... Uh, they cost around... Uh, 1,500 euros plus or minus uh, it depends on the model on the suit uh, what options do you get so, sorry no I, the last time I was on the drop zone as I said I opened uh, my reserve canopy and I had to leave it there so uh, they can collect the parts that uh, I get away and uh, get it together. So it's on the drop zone. So as you see, it's really huge. Uh, actually, uh, the difference in the wingsuits is you start with small uh, with wingsuit with small wings uh, on the legs and on the arms, and. Uh, when you become better, you can start learning to fly bigger suits. And uh, with bigger suits, uh, you can fly more, uh, but they're harder to fly because the smallest movement you made, it has, uh, it affects the large, super large surface and uh, this surface uh, makes you move in the air. So, uh, suits with this size, uh, uh, you're required to have uh, 200 wingsuit skydives to start learning to fly with this one. So it's not like for beginners. Uh, what is the material? Uh, what is the material? Uh, it's, um, it's some kind of nylon and uh, it doesn't uh, allow air to escape from it. and. You have inlets and when you start flying in the air, uh, the air goes inside and uh, the wingsuit is constructed the same way as the canopy you're flying. It's ram air design, which means that uh, you have cells inside the canopy and you have uh, uh, places where the air goes. Uh, on the canopy, it's on the front side and the coming air uh, is inflating the cells they become like a stable structure. And this is how you have the fabric uh, becoming from uh, like something like this. It becomes uh, ha like hard uh, material and uh, that's how you fly it. So, uh, I think I'm in the end. Uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, so yes. You're an instructor, so if someone wants to come to you yes. to teach him, first he or she has to have 200 jumps. Yes. Without this. Yes. Only with the parachute. Only with parachutes. Okay. And uh, we also have a requirement that. Uh, most of the jumps are like uh, recent jumps, like because you can have 200 jumps in 10 years and you're not flying a wingsuit with 200 jumps for 10 years. Yeah, you have, you have like uh, around uh, 50 to 100 uh, jumps for the last year. Do you recommend a place where you can jump with a parachute? Uh, we have a couple of drop zones in Bulgaria. Uh, the one I'm jumping. Uh, on is uh, close to uh, Radomir. Uh, it's uh, on a ex-military base. We are using the 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 the, the, uh, the airfield there. Uh, it, it's um, Kondofrey. Uh, it's like an hour drive from Sofia.
from the center of Sofia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the company that operates there is called Skydive Sofia. So there, uh, you, the one place you can try wingsuit flying without having the 200 jumps is in the tunnel. In the, and uh, firstly, they give you a wingsuit, they strap you with a harness, they teach you how to fly because uh, with the wingsuit, you can hit the wall really easy. So they strap you with a uh, harness and uh, basically you're floating there <laughs> and you don't have a lot of place to move. And when you start getting to know, actually I've done it the same. They do it for all the customers in the winter now in the beginning. And uh, like in half an hour, uh, if you're getting good with it, uh, they put you on a leash uh, and they hand you uh, with the leash and after that uh, uh, when they see that you, you can fly stable and uh, most of the time they don't hold you, you they remove the leash and you start flying like uh, like so on the video um Do you so flying wing suits no uh, skydivers, uh, the skydiving community is getting uh, bigger with every year uh, and uh, we will start having also uh, wingsuiters uh, because we also purchased a couple of uh, wingsuits that uh, if you have the 200 jumps and uh, come to fly with our course you don't, you're not required to have your own but uh, you should be some kind of a standard size. We have three wingsuit sizes and they're, they're like uh, uh, small, medium and large. But if you're like uh, short and fat, uh, you have to buy your own <laughs> or something like this. Yeah, if it's, yeah but in general for uh, like uh, skydiving being uh, in good condition, it, it really helps. Uh, other questions? You can show them the money. <laughs> mm. Okay.
Thank you.